what's up everybody this is another video 60 vids in 60 days i don't even know where we're at we're way past the pace mark of the 27 20 we're like in 40 video whatever it is anyways like subscribe tell me what you guys think in the video you can listen to this video if you don't have the time to watch it, you can listen to it on audio podcasts apple itunes or spotify google podcasts we're all over the place it's very so simple to post and the anchor platform is the thing anyways let me get right into it this is crazy trevor whitman was on the joe rogan podcast ufc trainer to champion in term lightweight champ justin gaethje and this guy went on the show and dropped a bunch of bombs of information if you didn't catch it you should definitely watch the joe rogan podcast but i'm going to sum it up here real quick it was a very interesting listen and he made some very good points about the ufc right he made some very good points about this professional organization that really a lot of people really haven't really thought about right myself included not that i know everything however it was uh, some key points so he had brought up he started kind of peddling his fight gloves right his his gear all his stuff and um you know you kind of think that this is going to be like a podcast where he's trying to trying to sell his stuff right he's trying to put his stuff out uh, put his stuff out there and you know the joe rogan podcast is giant over 200 downloads a month i mean blah 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 who you know he's the biggest okay so forth and so on okay this is great right and he's uh, obviously the ufc commentator well known and respected in industry so if this guy signs off on your stuff then you got a good chance of selling more more stuff right so one of the things that he brought up that trevor Whitman brought up was that he created these gloves gloves that he thought were superior something about the way that the arch the knuckle arches in the in the fist right the way that they position it in the fist it has this awkward positioning the way that the gloves wrapped around the fingers and and he he broke it all down it was very interesting to listen to however he made another glove that the ufc liked they wanted but trevor whitman being the smart guy that he is he patented his design right how smart is that right he got a patent for his design and the ufc has yet to adopt it dana white the ufc pre longtime president and basically the man behind the whole machine that is the ufc liked his idea liked it a lot but trevor whitman being this kind of purest loyal person to the game right which is kind of this weird thing is they wanted him to partner up with the companies that the ufc does business with in terms of equipment uh, uh management right so that was kind of the kind of the curiosity of the whole thing here where he was kind of being put in this awkward position where they wanted him to partner up hold on here let me get this right here sorry so anyways they wanted him to partner up and he just didn't want to do it he didn't want to basically give up his patents that he kind of created right this idea of this new type of equipment he had headgear shin guards he had this new bag this new foam i guess this this uh, absorbing foam so the, the 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 question okay there's a couple things there right with this new equipment and joe rogan was thoroughly impressed and for somebody like of his caliber and his knowledge and wisdom for him to get impressed that takes a lot right he's not just gonna be like oh yeah this is great this is wonderful go ahead and uh you know order me four thousand units you know this guy is been in the industry of mma fighting for a long 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 time so for him to sign off on it, him to be very interested in it and him to entertain this whole conversation it tells you that there has to be some validity to what this guy is doing right how his designs are coming out so with that you want to look at is this guy legit right so you you, you know i i listened to what he was i was saying and like the only kind of holes that i kind of thought about were he has a pad for his design the fighters like his design however the 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 equipment has to be thoroughly vetted so if you and then he kind of scoffed at the idea of like okay who wants to vet it the fighters like it well we know that's not the way it works in sports right for you to introduce a new style of equipment whether it's training or this one's going to be actually in the game you know i i think of like say football if they wanted to introduce a new material in football you, you or or a new um uniform right or new padding system or new helmets in the nfl because he he also talked about the nfl he used parallels to the nfl right which he, he he did make a good point but let me stay uh stick with this point here he talked about you know what kind of testing would you like if the players like it so we had an an example of this where a player antonio brown from the pittsburgh steelers oakland raiders never played for them and then new england patriots never played got in this big old debacle but he had helmet gate right helmet gate where it was 
he liked a certain helmet, but it didn't pass snuff for protection levels, right? So that was independently studied and evaluated that that helmet was that style of helmet that Antonio Brown was attempting that said that he was comfortable using and he loved using is no longer accepted by the NFL and the players union, right? So it was, it was accepted that that helmet no longer met the requirements for head trauma in the sport of football, right? So the insurances and everything, they're not going to let him play with that. Other players had issue with that, right? But he was, he kind of really kind of tried to stand, stand his ground. He ultimately lost and he adapted to a new helmet, right? So it, that's the same uh, parallel to what Trevor Whitman was talking about, like what kind of testing the players, you know, the fighters like the gloves and they're comfortable with the gloves. No, it has to get thoroughly vetted, tested. You know, you have to go through an independent testing system so that if you're going to adopt a new glove in the UFC, which is considered by many the premier fighting organization in the world right or kind of what we would call the gold standard you have to really take into account this idea that in order for them to adopt something it's a big decision now it's not just something that you're just going to easily do right and so they wanted to uh, uh you know so there was that qualm with it right which there's validity to that trevor whitman probably does need to get it independently tested and i know that's going to cost him a ton of money but maybe he should get a backer or maybe he should get a supporter or maybe one of these other fight leagues should back it and they can use it as well this idea that there's a uniform or universal glove that has to be used amongst all the organizations is kind of a weird thing to do because everybody kind of has their own stipulations and it's their own organization and they can make up their own rules but i can see how this idea could maybe eventually happen where the gloves it's a uniform standard that everybody has to use and if that's the case then i can see why a company like the ufc um and their organizations want to own that patent they want to buy his patent out so they like his glove but they're not going to adopt it because they don't have the intellectual property or they don't have the patents that go along with it and i can see from the usc ufc standpoint it's like we're going to make your gloves famous we're going to sell a bunch of these gloves we can mandate that everybody use these gloves however if we're not going to partake in some of the profits on it then we're not really interested because that's just the way things go right everybody wants their own little piece of what goes on so it's disingenuous to the fighters if in fact those gloves are superior right but the red tape of the fact that the ufc wants to partake in some of the profits of the sale and usage of these gloves right is kind of the backdoor kind of we don't care about your health kind of concept it's a statement of we're not interested in your health we have to make money first it kind of makes the ufc look bad by trevor whitman going on a ufc's employees podcast which is the pretty much the 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 country's you know the world's largest podcast it, it sends a bunch of mixed signals there i don't know how whatever what's going to unravel with this if if the UFC is going to give in or they're going to lean into the fact that they're not going to use Trevor Women. So he could have nailed the coffin. He could have put the final nail in the coffin where they're never going to adopt his gloves now. They're never going to adopt it and they're only going to buy out his patent. Or they could give in and give it more credence and maybe partner up with him. If he doesn't have the production levels, maybe he should partner up with a Nike or Reebok so they can produce a lot of, of these gloves at a higher quality, right? So if he owns a patent for it, maybe these gloves can be made another step better. So I, I like this idea. I like where everything's going with it. So one of the other things that he talked about, right? So that'll be an interesting story to follow is what's going to happen with these new UFC gloves, right? So let's say, for example, the new apparel partner, let's say the contract runs out with Reebok. I think that runs out in 2023 or 2024. The next apparel company, let's say it's Nike, they come in and they become the exclusive sponsor of the UFC and then they partake in that. Maybe they're, that. Maybe that's what everybody's waiting for because maybe Nike or Reebok, maybe Reebok's not interested, but maybe Nike is interested. They're waiting for them to secure the contract. Maybe they're next in line for the sponsorship deal, in which case they could maybe pull that into the mix of the whole thing and then utilize their manufacturing processes, their technology. Maybe they can use some of the materials. Maybe Reebok could just buy the patent out or license it to Trevor Whitman if it's a superior glove and everybody will be happy. Trevor Whitman will get a little piece of the pie of everything. He doesn't have to manufacture them by hand anymore and it's better for the fighters all around. But I think that this being brought to the surface in the way that it did 
raises a bunch of red flags. And I think that Dana White should address it in some way, right? He should acknowledge it, address it. And he's acknowledged, you know, according to Trevor Whitman, that it's a really nice glove. So why not, right? So, and then, so one of, so there's that issue, right? Let's hope to see if it comes out, if the drug, uh, a glove gets adopted. But then one of the things that he kind of pointed out is he talked about this idea of practice, right? Or training rather, right? So UFC trains, you know, the fighters don't train with the uniform, a uniform set of equipment. It's, a, it's left up to the fighters, which could incur injury, right? And, and the UFC, the MMA world is known for injuries where the fights have been canceled. I mean, let's just look at this great example, right? And, and when he talks about this whole thing about the uniformity of training equipment, right? Where he is right, right? In the NFL or, or any collegiate sport, you have this idea where all the stuff you're training with, there's a uniformity, there's a contract, there's negotiation, there's an agreement, and all that gear has been tested and approved by like say the NCAA, the NFL, or whatever it is, right? So that being said, there is validity to what he's saying. Trevor Whitman is has made a statement that the UFC doesn't have a uniform policy of what kind of equipment you can use to possibly prevent injuries at a lower rate, right? So that's a big thing. Injury prevention, and if the UFC is not involved in that because of the fighters by their nature, they're basically considered independent contractors, and there is no union to protect them or help them unify these type of standards, you now have this issue that is starting to come to light where the UFC is making more and more money. They have these bigger and bigger deals. Their partnership with ESPN, which is ultimately uh, in conjunction with Disney, which owns ESPN, which is, you know, Disney is one of the largest entertainment conglomerates in the world, right? So that being said, I like this idea of uniforming the practice standards and his idea of, you know, of course, he wants to incorporate his stuff into it, right? So him incorporating his stuff into it, I think that there's some validity to that. However, um, that's a long way coming and he's asking for something that requires maybe the push of an organized union, which the UFC is anti and wholly against. But, you know, we'll, we'll wait and see how that unravels. You know, the red tape of players' health and safety um, shouldn't be sacrificed. And I get this idea that they are independent contractors. And there's a lot of things that the UFC does where, you know, after a fight, if they get injured, you know, they all that gets covered under their medical coverage and so forth and so on. There's some other things that they get taken care of on. So I think there should be, you know, where the fighters, the week of the fight, they give, they're given supplements, they're being taught how to cut weight. You know, there's a lot of stuff that the UFC is doing in a positive manner. And I think the next evolution, and I think they've probably been thinking, I think the UFC has been contemplating how to go about uniformly, um, making uniform available to to contracted under contracted uh ufc fighters right and and ufc fighters you know uh, you know whether there's five or six or seven hundred on the roster probably there's a top 30 that we know by name but there's other important people that participate in all these fight cards that are very entertaining and you know every so often one you know rises to the top like rises to the top like justin gaethje and his interview with uh, him trevor whitman and joe rogan was a very interesting and telling one and that brought up some very interesting questions about the safety of a, of a player at what point that these things are being ignored the ufc is being complicit and the insurance starts getting involved and they are not doing the most they can do to keep their people safe and the insurance that they have to get per state from the athletic commissions go skyrockets and goes up because they're not doing these things where's the oversight with this and where is the uniformity with it right so all these fighters they can choose who they train with and how they train um, there should be a little bit more guidance. There should be more recommendations as to what equipment should be purchased. And there should be more testing. There should be a testing facility that the UFC has where they approve certain gloves if they meet this requirement. So Trevor Whitman's glove, theoretically, if, if in a perfect world, he could put his gloves, his shin guards, his bags, all this other material to the test at a UFC approved facility where it's an in, where it's it's an independent testing lab so that way their gloves just like supplements get approved and get put on an approved list cuz they're tested by independent testing labs uh, to be consumed by fighters, right? So they should do the same thing with the equipment and gloves. I'm sure there's something to that already, but I would like to see more of it. So anyways, this is my take on the UFC. You could check this out on YouTube and Facebook. 
and the audio version will be on Spotify, Apple iTunes, and Google Podcasts, and the Anchor app. You guys check it out. Tell me what you guys think. Talk to you later. Bye.